Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Hello out there, all of you Hello Self podcast fans. As you know, this is Patricia Leonard, and I'm your host. And you know the mission of Hello Self Podcast, I'm sure, by now. It's about turning your pants into cans and your dreams into plans. And another piece of it that's very important is getting those dreams and goals off that someday shelf and starting to manifest them now. And the guest that I have today is going to take you on a journey of her manifestation. She got her dreams and goals off that shelf, and she just keeps making more. And she's going to share her life, the trajectory of her life and career. And I will just do a brief intro, and then I'll turn it over to her. So thank you for being here today, Gloria. Thank you, Patricia. Yes, I'm so excited. And this is Gloria Lucia Zapata Elias. And she is the guest today, and you're going to learn a lot from her. So pay attention. (laughs) And so here's a brief bio that she gave me. And I wanted to just highlight this. And what I loved about this is Hello Self is really about getting to know ourselves. And as we share who we are in our journey, then we help others. And that is exactly the purpose of this is I believe that in every story, everyone's story, there are many gifts and lots of glory. And you're going to get some today. And that's exactly how. And we may stop for a moment and highlight some things so you pay attention. (laughs) But I just wanted to let you know that this bio is a combination of she and, and sharing some intimate stuff. But it's what she sent to me initially. And then she took me on the journey. She says to me, Patricia, I am not your traditional archaic Mexican woman that did absolutely everything completely backwards. First, I had children. Then I got married. Then I went to college. Then purchased a couple of houses. Then purchased four businesses. And at 47, Years of age, I am not slowing down one bit. My main purpose, she says, in life is to be a support for others with dreams. Those that get stuck in the surviving mode, I bet there's a few out there. I could really relate to what she was talking about. A surviving mode of living, and she puts their dreams on Or maybe I added this, put their dreams on that Sunday show. But I think that's what happens. We get in a surviving mode is what Gloria is telling us. She said to me, and this is the thing that really warmed my heart, and I'm sure it will yours. Mm -hmm. I am crying as I write this. Something somewhere inside of me wants to make up for lost time that I spent trying to survive. Any of you out there have probably been through the same thing. And I want to wind up the end of it by saying this. She says, and I'm the one who has to self-talk. Because we get on that survival mode. Self-talk and convince myself that the hard part of life has been made less hard because of that first hurdle. If any of you are trying to do something right now, it's funny. I went to get acupuncture today, and it's very interesting. The young lady who brought me in, she was the receptionist. As I was leaving, I don't know why I did this. 
But we started talking and I said, I just want to remind you. She said, what do you do? And I said, I'm a career coach and uh, anything else that I decide to do. But I said, if you have anything this year, are you thinking about getting some goals off that someday shelf? And she said, as a matter of fact, I am. I've been thinking about going, getting my certification in acupuncture. And right now she's, she works there. She's getting to know it. And so I said, then step out. And she said, you, could, you don't know what that meant to me today. These kind of things that Gloria is doing for you and the stories you hear just may be that jump start that you need to take that first step, like Gloria is saying. She says, I choose to believe the hardest hurdle is to overcome the first step. The rest all just fall in line. Isn't that exciting? Now we're going to hear the real story from Gloria. Okay, Gloria, now take us on your journey. And I love already the start we've got. Where to start from? Yes, where to start from? I think you did a great job. Who am I? That's a really good question. I don't think that at a very young age, I knew who I was. I think we're all on our own journey. And I think that those of us who are fortunate enough to love to read, love to self-educate, love to speak with other people, especially those that are older and have lived longer and can share their experiences, we really don't know that our life expands besides this one block radius that we live on. It's really up to us to do the self-talk because we can have friends and family and including therapists, tell us that they can show that they have faith in us, but unless we believe it, it's not reality. So like Mary Ford said, if you can, if you think you can or can't, you're right. That's right. Yes. Great message there. <laughs> so growing up, I was raised by a single mom. She was not a U.S. citizen. She worked very, very hard to raise my brother and I. And, um, at 18 and 19, I got pregnant. And so 19 and 20, I had my boys. And so I started my journey very, very young. I went to high school, went to college. Oh my goodness. Started four businesses, like you said in my bio. And at 47, there is no slowing me down. When I said that it was very difficult as a young person thinking outside of the box, it was because we were so much living in survival mode. And so even though I say that I feel like I have to make up for lost time, it's not because I feel I have to catch up to anyone else. So I feel that now I can dictate how my life is going to be. I'm on my own timeline, not on anybody else's. And I think that's really difficult for a lot of people to remember is that I think you're it's right. not a competition. This is life. Yes. It is life. And it's happening in spite of us. It's going to happen. And I have so many people that say, what is my purpose? What, what, I don't know what my purpose is, so I don't know how to get started. No, you just discovered. You just went after it and said, I'll do it a day at a time. Yeah. And yes. Yeah. It took me 20 years to get a two year degree. And I went into the field. My degree was in administration of justice. And I became an extradition officer. My father was a retired correctional officer. My mother retired from the State Department of Rehab. And so I followed in the footsteps of my father. And I realized that wasn't for me. But you know what they say about every job you've ever had in your life? Yeah. It, it is just a stepping stone for you to get onto something bigger and better. Yes. Yeah. And you know what? I think this is great because I had a conversation with somebody yesterday. It was on a podcast, as a matter of fact. And everything, he is an actor and a chiropractor. And, but everything he's done, fits with it. So 
everything we do, it doesn't matter what it is, building our foundation. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. So in, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna bounce off of what you just the chiropractor who's also an actor. So I'm not just a bed and breakfast owner and a landlord and a future nursery owner. We're hoping to get it off the ground uh, either at the end of this year or sometime be wow. by the oh. spring of next year. I actually have my own cleaning business yes. that I do by myself. And the reason why I bring that up, because I think it's important to not look down on yourself just because, for example, me, I'm the cleaning lady. I had a psychologist who's a client of mine ask me, she said, I don't mean to be rude, but why do you clean for a living? Because I have education, I have experience, and I can keep up with her in conversation like it's nobody's business. Yeah. And said, no, I said, I'm not offended. I said, it's and it, it really made me think, I don't remember what exactly it was I said to her, but that was like a month and a half ago. And so I saw her this week and I said, you know what? I have an answer for you. I like the, oh God, what's the word? Oh my goodness, I had a brain fart. When someone doesn't, no, it's not autonomy. It's, I'll think of it later. It's okay. It's when, when, I walk into, <laughs> when I walk into a person's home, they don't know all of this about me. All they know is that I'm there to do a job, which I love, by the way. I get paid to do something I love. Yes. And I will do it until I can no longer do it. It doesn't matter how many houses I buy, how many other businesses I start. You have to do something for yourself. And it ends up helping someone else. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And you know what? Not to look down on what you do, but to celebrate it. And yes, because I think sometimes we think, oh, no, I'm just this. I'm just, no, you're not just, you are. Yeah. Yeah. And that's still the, trying, yeah. <laughs> that's the beauty of it. I'm that and I'm this and I'm a mother and I'm a business owner and I'm a millionaire. I'm a whatever. Yeah. Because I think that we just, and I've talked to others about this. Society puts us in a box. And, oh, you're a cleaning lady. Then they have this picture of what a cleaning lady is. Yes. They don't have this idea that this woman owns, does all these things, has got all, have done all this. And because I think we, our culture limits who we are if we let it. Yep. Yeah. If we allow it. Yes. If, if we allow it, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Hey, I love everything you stand for. And so you're opening a babysitting. No, plant nursery. Plant nursery. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh, yes. She's still out there doing more. <laughs> I, I, I'm never going to stop. Oh my. My plants are my babies because I had my kids so young. They left the coop a long time ago. Oh, yeah. And so now she can still play the mother. She can play the friend. She can play the teacher. She can play the facility where they learn. I think that is a key thing. So what is it you believe that has caused you to move to the level that you play in now in our society? I choose to believe that life does not have to be hard. I believe that life should be trying. And sometimes exhausting, but I believe that's where growth occurs. I believe that when we put ourselves in a position where we just become stagnant, there's no growth there and depression occur. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. Depression occurs. Yes. And to get yourself in that type of rut, it's going to take twice as much self-talk to get yourself out of there. Gloria, I think, oh my God, you are, we're so in a line, but the COVID, everybody talked about COVID and yet, you know how it just destroyed everything. However, we had to stay at home with our family who we don't even like sometimes. We had to, yeah. And it was a disruption. And you are saying this, hello, self moments can be disruption. We lose our job. Sometimes that's a hello self moment. 
Sometimes we have family issues that we are sad about. Another hello self moment, because we don't quit. We may pause, but it wakes us up to a grander part of what life is. Would you say that, that sometimes you said disruptions are not always bad? Exactly. Sometimes we need moments to occur that make us take a step back to figure out, are we on the right path? And something I've told a lot of people on my own journey is when things are going really bad for you, you're probably not in the right place at the right time doing what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. 31 years, no, about 21 years ago, I moved to Southern California and I only lasted six months. I'm a country girl. That's what I am. (laughs) In a matter of three days, the home that I signed a lease for was rented to someone else. I had excellent credit, still do. Yes. My vehicle that I had purchased a year before from a car dealership broke down and my babysitter quit and mm-hmm. watched payment immediately. So those three things occurred. And I like to believe in signs. Oh my gosh. And so I think God's always sending you signals. Turn left here, turn right there. And if we don't listen, he will knock harder on your door yeah. until you open the door and your eyes are no longer closed. So what I realized at that point was, I moved to Southern California for work. I ruined my impeccable credit and I had two little boys, four and five. And so I said, I need to move back home. So I did end up, thank God, getting a job transfer from Southern California. I ended up working out of Woodland PD near Sacramento and uh, life just got a million times better. But I needed that experience. I needed to be there because there's a reason why I moved to Southern California, which is irrelevant at this point. It did me good, even though it was a hard pill to Mm -hmm. swallow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know what? And another thing about that, most people will say that was a mistake I made. There are no mistakes. It's an experience. Exactly. And it woke you up to say, I know where I need to be right now. And I need to move on. I've got a. Lo- I've got everything that I need to move on. Yeah, it wasn't exactly what, but I don't like to say that we make mistakes. Now I've done that my whole life, but it's just another aspect of our life and learning. And that's what you're saying. You learn yeah. from yeah. that. I just had another conversation. Any opportunity that I see that I can carry a conversation on with someone who's going through a hard time. Yes. If the door opens, I walk right through it. Oh, my God. (laughs) And so she was sharing how she was having a difficult time with her four-year-old. And so I said, you know what's so beautiful about living in 2024 is that any problem that you have right now, any question that you have right now, just go to the library. Yeah. Somebody's already written a book about it. (laughs) Somebody's already figured it out for you. Exactly. And you know what? Sometimes that's all the person needs to get out of that funk or to think outside the box of their poor me victimized thinking because we all get there. And if we can just, and that's what you are always saying is I want to help others get out of their whatever, their insecurity, their survival mode or whatever. And you and sometimes it's not anything big. It's just a smile or something yeah. like that. It, yeah. it's, just, it's amazing. And yet in our society today, we tend to walk on. And yeah. I like to, hello. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or just a smile or something. Yeah. I realize that throughout life, we all have to have a tool belt. And on that tool belt, we can add a self-help book. Let me tell you a story about my procrastination because I used to be really bad about it. At college, we were informed that to pass the semester, it was interpersonal communication. We were going to have to go to the library and read a self-help book. I've never done that. So this bright yellow book called 
procrastination, because let me tell you, I didn't think I had any issues. So I see in big black letters on a yellow piece, on a yellow book, and it said procrastination. I checked it out. I procrastinated so long to read that book. I had to buy it. And let me tell you, it probably took me forever to get through it. But it was a book that I put on my imaginary tool belt. So I never forget that it is as simple as going to the library and looking up whatever it, issue it is that I have. Because like I said, somebody's already written a book about it. Exactly. And I think that we will deny that we're going through any of the, no, I get on, look what I've done this and I've done that and I went to college. And no, we'll try to validate everything to say, no, I'm not a procrastinator. But those hello self moments, just like you, <laughs> I'm going to buy that book. And then you read it. That was a hello self couple of moments to say, a procrastinator day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what I was, what I would, what I had been saying earlier, the word I couldn't remember was what comes with just being a house cleaner is the anonymity. There have been. Yeah. When you're a house cleaner, you are inside of someone's private space and you have the blessing to either put your earphones on, listen to your audiobook, your music, your gardening videos, and just ignore the world outside. And I do that sometimes. However, there are certain houses that I go to and I know they're going to be discussing things. For example, real estate, they're going to be discussing books that they just, they enjoyed listening to, and I'll clock out really quick, jot it down in my phone, and then go right back to cleaning the toilet. <laughs> so not only are you helping them, they're helping the <laughs> <laughs> But that's the way it is that we see everything as a mutual opportunity. <laughs> it is a symbiotic relationship. Yes, absolutely. Oh my yes. gosh, I love that. Now I know what cleaning ladies do. <laughs> I honestly believe that every person you encounter in your life is meant to serve a purpose, whether yes. the purpose is for you or yes. if it's them. Yeah, I you. Every person that comes, <clears throat> excuse me, into our home, into our bed and breakfast, we learn something from them. And they learn something from us. Absolutely. I think you mentioned something a while ago, the nudges from God or the nudges. Um, yeah. 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 Because I think that sometimes our vacations are nudges that I, I need to get away. And then what they find is a friend for a lifetime that they may have met at a bed and breakfast or whatever. Yeah. Yes. So I, I think. Sometimes we think those nudges are about a certain thing. They may or they may not be, but to follow it, and I, I wrote a book, and I've said this in other podcasts, but it reminds me of what you were saying. It's called The Listening and the Knowing, and that's exactly what it's about, is learning how to listen mm -hmm. and then know that is a nudge from God or whoever your higher power is. But it's a nudge to turn left, turn right, go straight ahead, or yeah. wait a while. Yeah. So yeah. I think that I love what you were saying there because I think a lot of people, they take procrastination as a waiting for that sign. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for a sign from God. Well, <laughs> and the truth is, it might be their own procrastination. Maybe he's tripped them. Maybe he put notes on the front door. <laughs> and I, yeah, but you can just be driving along and a nudge, a sign can change. Yeah, can change yeah. your, yeah, the, what you're seeing. Because I think that uh, that's interesting because what, what we desire or what we're moving toward, he may put those, like you said, those people in front of us. Oh my gosh. And you listen as while you're doing your job, you say, that is exactly what I was thinking about the other day. Sometimes I'll listen to this minister on Sunday on uh, television. 
And it's funny thing. I say, okay, God, what's the message he has for me today? I'm not for like he's talking mm. to me. It's Lori. I was this. Yeah, what joy. You say, what brings me great joy? I could, could you expand on that a little? Because you say, my belief in God. So, <sighs> this is very embarrassing for me to admit. I believe that I'm fortunate that I've been very blessed by God. Yeah. The, the, with the inner fuel that I have. And this is the part that I don't really tell people because it does have such negative connotations to it. We're in, this is a non-judging zone. <laughs> yeah. So my inner fuel, my form of ignition has always been anger and frustration and strong will. Mm-hmm. All the emotions that some people refer to as negative and harmful, mm-hmm. I've always been able to sit in those negative emotions. And that's what detonates me to get on to bigger and better things. Because yes, I can't sit in something that brings me down. I can't even be around people that oh uh, choose to stay in those negative emotions because it it brings me down. And so I, in turn, use those negative emotions to propel me to where I am supposed to be. Yes. And we're raised with, oh, you should just be happy and content and accepting of everything and ignore these negative emotions. And I really wish people would not because, excuse me, those emotions are your inner fuel. Yes. They really are. Yes. I think it's interesting because we talk a lot in our society about the tribe of people that we hang around. And we can become that if we hang around people uh, just to be nice or whatever. It doesn't mean you have to be cruel to them, but you you might even say, I was talking to a man the other day. And he was talking about his health. And I said to him, and he was talking real negative, and he did have some real problems. And I said, you know what? I don't mean to try to tell you this because I know you're going through a tough time, but maybe we attract to us what we put out there. I don't know, just my own belief. But I said, if you if you are talking about this in a negative way, like you're not, maybe you're attracting even more illness to you. And I'm just asking you to think about that. That's all I was asking him to do is just think about that and see, because if we and, and we're guilty, it's not just the people we hang around. Yeah. We, yeah. We say it too. My Nana, which is grandmother in Spanish. Yeah. She she used to say, tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. And my God. That's not too fabulous. Extent. To a certain extent, yes, it it is, it can be true. It can. Yeah. I believe that putting yourself out there amongst different types of people, you get to pick and choose who do you want to be, who do you want to become. And you know what, go yes, maybe even by your own example, you can help change others, even if they're negative or they don't see, and, but you live joyfully. And how are you always that way, Gloria? I don't know. And maybe you get a chance to share. Do you see what I'm saying? I always say I walk between the raindrops in life because I'm not letting anything rain on my parade. It doesn't mean that I don't hang with some of those people, but that's not who I only hope I can help them. I'm not going to leave. Yeah. 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 You can only be around that so long because they do need some of your positive energy. Yes. And I think if they see us, you said something about your strong will is it can be seen as negative or it can be seen as what propelled you to yeah. continue. And who is that football quarterback that everybody said he had an ego? I can't think right now. Yeah, it'll come to me later. 
<laughs> but but anyway, he I remember he said one time because everybody said he's got a big ego because here he is forty or thirty nine and he's still playing a quarterback and still winning. But he said, "Yes, I do have an ego," and he said, "The ego can either be good or bad." And you have to decide how you're going to use it. And I will. And that was basically what you were saying is that, yes. And that's, I think you can say that. And I'm like that too. I am, I'm a position person. I take my position. I remember when I was a little girl, I was 16. I had a car and I, I didn't like cigarette smoke. <laughs> so this young man, okay, I had uh, three people in the car with me. And he said, Patricia, I need to smoke. And I said, you're not smoking in the car. So I said, I'll pull over. And it was just an old dilapidated car. But I pulled over and I said, okay, get out and smoke. And then get back. And we made it for it. I do. I want to be a leader. And yes, I'm a follower sometimes. But I want to. Yeah. So I love who you are and what you're saying there. Patricia, you just. Oh, you just said something beautiful. You said to the young man that if you want to smoke, you I will pull over. You need to step out. I think in life we forget that it is our responsibility. And I'm going to use the word train. And I'm sorry if I offend anyone. But just like we train our animals, we have to train the people that we encounter on how we are going to be treated, what we will accept and what we will not. Yes. It's a really? responsibility. Yes. They're, oh, wow. Listen, are you all listening? These are great things to remember about living a life that you want because the world will sometimes put us down, but I think the world may put us down, but a lot of times we're the worst of our own self. I love what Gloria just brought up here because pay attention and stand for what you stand for and help others understand how to, that'll help you in relationships, that'll help you in family, that'll help you in your work you do. But we need to, we get mad at people because I didn't like what she said, but we go off and we stomp off and we don't say anything. And sometimes we don't have to be argumentative, but sometimes we just have to say, what did you mean by that? That really hurt me. I think my sister-in-law had that one time, that conversation, and I said, let me ask you, that that really hurt. And I want to ask, could we have a contract that if we say something that hurts the other one, that it's okay for us to mention it? And we made that contract, and we have kept it ever since. Now, we were grown, both of us, mothers, and our kids were grown. But we made that contract. That's beautiful. Yeah. think you're basically saying the same thing. It's, it's okay to say how we want to be respected. Yeah. They say you only know as much as you're exposed to. But when someone makes a comment that is not kind, and you've never been exposed to that before, your inner gut will tell you that did not feel good. And you have a choice to make. You can continue chit-chatting with this person who has just offended you, whether it was on accident or otherwise, yeah. or you can walk away. And especially if it's somebody in passing that you know you never have to see again, you can't just walk away, but you need to remind yourself you're going to encounter someone like that again, because unless you learn the lesson, it's going to come back to you exactly again and again. Yes. And you know, that goes in relationships too, not just sister-in-laws, but in husband and wife. And yet we get divorced. I didn't like the way you treated me and you've been doing, you never said anything. Yeah. So I think we, I'm not sure we even respect ourselves sometimes, Gloria. What do you think? I think sometimes we're too hard on ourselves. We're yes. very unforgiving. We, I tell people when they come through my home, I'm a hypocrite. I'll be, I'm the biggest hypocrite in the world. 
because I want to help. I want to help. Tell me what I can do to make your life better. But when I overwork and I come home exhausted and one of the ladies asks, can I make you a cup of tea? I say, I can make my cup of tea. And I'm dying. I have just robbed an opportunity for someone to feel good to make me a cup of tea because I'm too stubborn. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. You know, listen to me. Do you hear me in the audience? It's like give and take. Yes. It really is. Yes. It is a definite give and take. And we, I don't know, we get in that control or that whatever it is. I don't know. Um, part of it is just like we were talking about the ego. The ego has its good side and its tough side. Yeah. That it just doesn't. Okay. Let me see what else is on here that, that you brought up and that we haven't covered yet. Um, let's see. What are your businesses? Yeah, you talked a little bit. You've talked about that already. Your bed and breakfast. And okay. So let me give you a little bit of background. So a lot of my work history was working in psychiatric residential treatment facilities. And when one day my best friend came up to me and said, Hey, Gloria, do you have a day off? I said, Absolutely. And at that time, I was working 80 to 120 hours a week. And I said, yeah, I have one day off this week. What do you need? He said, I need to move out cleaning. He was a, he is still a landlord of two apartment complexes, 64 units in total. And somebody had moved out and he said, you're a pretty clean woman. You want to make some extra money? And I said, how much? And so he said a number and I said, absolutely. How much? So and it was in the apartment complex in which I lived in. So, yeah, I'm oh, yeah. an expert. <laughs> and so I ended up doing such an amazing job that he told his mom, who told all of her girlfriends, and they told all of their girlfriends. And they say, never be surprised if the business you start with is not the one you end up with. So here I'm working. 80 to 120 hours a week, hardly seeing my children. A few of those positions were 24 hours a week. Yes. And I'm hardly seeing my children. I'm literally eating, sleeping, and showering at work. And I ended up going down to 40 hours a week at the psych facility because I was cleaning so much and making more money, cleaning for a living. So... I said, okay, God, I'm listening. All right. So I start cleaning full time. Within one year, within 12 months of starting my cleaning business, that was by 2008, I was fully established. Market crash, okay? Yes, right. (laughs) I'm bringing that up. I'm bringing that up for your listeners. So I started in 2007, doing it full time. By the end of of 12 months, we're now in 2008, I'm fully established. I no longer uh, work at the psych facility. I am able in five years to start to have all the money I needed to buy my first house. And we move in and then the children grow up, move out. I'm left with a four bedroom house. What do I do now? Well, let's turn it into a bed and breakfast. That was in 2000, at the end of 2018. 2019, 12 months later, 2020, we are fully established because of the pandemic. Oh, yes. So I think it's important for people to notice that in times, in very difficult times, believe it or not, those are great times to start businesses. Pay attention to what is needed. What can what service can you provide? Let me tell you, I honestly believe that we are the least expensive in the entire nation of renting rooms. And we had, um, uh, what are they called? Uh, The workers that were necessary. Uh, We had tree climbers. We had people from the medical profession. Um, And they would- Living in your apartments? In my home. In my home. In your home. Because it was now a bed and breakfast. Oh, And during the pandemic, the bed and breakfast took off. It took off so well that we were able to buy 
a home in the next town over and offer it to a group of firemen at a rate that's actually below market, but it's okay with us because the flat, the rent, the flat rate takes care of the mortgage and the utilities. Yeah. They are able to save money and hopefully someday save up for their own home. Oh, yeah. It's not just about filling your own pockets. It's about also filling the pockets of other people, being more of a service, giving more than what you take. Oh my gosh. What a great, another great lesson. Oh my gosh is sharing what you've got. And uh, yeah, because when we die, we can't take any of it with us. None of it. You've got such, oh my gosh, that, yeah, such a, uh, that's the kind of attitude we need in our world today is just helping others. And in doing that, we help ourselves is what, yeah, is what you're saying. That's amazing. Uh, it's just amazing. And yet it just seems like a natural thing that we should be doing in life. But we don't think that way often, I think, a lot of times is. And start, and, and I think she, um, Gloria just brought out something that listeners, I want you to hear is maybe this is a perfect time to start your business that you got on that someday shelf that you say, when the kids grow up, when I get the money, when I retire, no, look at the opportunities now and see what's needed out there. Because I think we'll just keep putting it off and stay in survival mode. And that's just another way of moving us out of it. Yeah. But Trisha, I think a lot of us as women, we tell ourselves, I want that gorgeous dress over there, but I don't want to buy it until I'm a size six. Oh, if, yes. If we never buy that dress because we are waiting to become a size six, yes, we'll never buy the dress. No. We need to buy the dress in the size that we're in and be content with that. And then when you get to size six, buy another one. Exactly. Buy a prettier one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That is a great point. And that's what happens so much of the time is we wait and wait and wait. In fact, yeah. if the look at Gloria, she took her kids and went to another city <laughs> and it didn't kill her. It might have made a little disruption or a bubble in her life, but she went right back. So if you don't ever take a risk. And it's not really a risk. It just seems like that to you because it's not something that you can clearly see. Step one, step two, step three. And we, since we can't see it that clearly, we don't trust and we don't move on. Okay. okay. It, is there something else? It's up to me where I, and I love that statement too. It's up to me where I go in life. She's got that bold that it <laughs> And just remember, you can't blame somebody else, you all out there. Oh, no, my husband wouldn't let me. Or my mom and dad said, don't do that. Or, yeah, I don't have the. But, yeah, it's up to you. Can you say more about that? Did you feel like you were alone out there sometimes making these choices? I've always known that I was different. And I've always accepted that I lived my life on my own tune. I don't know how the saying goes, but I danced to my own tune. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, what, what's the worst that can happen in life? You're afraid to ask for a favor. The worst thing that can happen is they say no. What's the worst that can happen if I move to Southern California from Northern California? I don't like it. It was an experience. I can come back. I can move back, right? I think a lot of us allow our fears to dictate what we do, mm-hmm. who we become. And it doesn't have to be like that. You, if people could understand that the power is in them, they grew self-taught. And I've met people that say, I don't self-talk. Wow. Okay. Because There is a saying that the most dangerous thing is a made-up mind. How do you get to that point, though? 
by self-taught. So we are responsible for what we do in life. They say there have been studies where they've interviewed people that are on their dying bed and they ask them, what do you regret most? I regret not having done that yes. and not having done that. I don't want to have regrets. I don't because I don't know if I'm going to die tomorrow. That's exactly you know, where we're not. I want to do what makes what brings me joy. And if I can help someone, if I can be somebody's support system that I wish I would have had when I was younger, mm -hmm. when I was so busy just trying to survive, I could not think, what do I want to be when I get older? If I can motivate someone or be somebody's listening ear to get them to get a move on. Right. I will be that person. It's just like you said, Gloria, the first step is the toughest. It the really first, is. Yeah, the first step. And that's the thing that walk away from this today, realizing that what Gloria has been telling you is some ways to get out of your own way and just step forward. Just step yeah. forward. And you know what? You will have people along the way will say, you must be crazy. You don't have any, you can't do that. What do you think? Oh, brother, you're just a woman and a woman. Yeah, you have a, every week you've got another new idea. Yeah, whatever. If you, if you listen to people when they say those things to you, they're not really talking about you. They're talking about themselves. <laughs> Because they can't see themselves taking those risks. My husband, he loves Tony Robbins. Oh my goodness. And I'm gonna quote, I'm gonna quote Tony Robbins here. Life is not happening to you, life is always happening for you. Yes. So he had me take this test. Okay. Yes. And one of the main things for my husband is certainty. He and so when we finished taking some tests that Tony Robbins gives on his website, yeah, yeah. He said to me, honey bunny. Your main desire in life is uncertainty. He said, no, I don't like that. I said, well, good, because it's my number one thing that I hold high is uncertainty. Because uncertainty, I don't know what the next page in the book is going to bring because I'm, I'm the writer. Yes. You know? Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, by the way, audience, I met... Tim, her husband, on the telephone, and I loved him on the telephone. So she's got a great partner, too. But, um, yes, I agree that we just, oh, my gosh, there are so many synchronicities here. Tony Robbins is, he's a motivator. He's a, he helps us open doors. He is yes. not your answer, but he helps you open doors, and he makes you look, hello, self. Who are you? So he takes that step. I wrote another book and it's called Hello Self. <laughs> and it's written like a screenplay. But in frame one, there are questions to ask. And it's all about who am I? Who am I? And there's every, every frame is a set of new questions. And when you get at the end, you've written your documentary, perhaps, or your own screenplay, and I give you an Oscar. And I think that is exactly hello, what Hello Self is. We need to, whether it's Tony Robbins or whether it's my book or whether whatever it is, sit down. I was, <laughs> oh, this is another thing. I love what we're talking about, Gloria. But I was asked to be part of a theatrical production, and it was called Letters Never Sent. And she asked me to be in it, and I said, I don't know what I do. And so anyway, I ended up writing a letter to myself. The most eye-opening, real, you, you mentioned that I feel like I'm crying. I am crying as I write this. I was crying as I wrote this. I had her to my down. I said, Patricia, how come you didn't encourage me when I wanted to do this? And you said, no, 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 because there is a part of us that says, yes, you can. And another part that says, no, you can't. 
<laughs> no, and run. And Tom, yeah. So this letter that you wrote yourself, was it in the past? Was it a letter to yourself when you were younger? Or was it with her? Through my life, just like you have written here, your bio. So I went through different, I, I just wrote it and then opened the letter on stage. And I had yellow sheets of paper. And on there, I said, this is the letter I've written. And I didn't say who it was to at first, but I was sitting on a tall stool and I kept looking over at her. So it was my, it was my spiritual self speaking to my physical self. And so what I did was I just, along the way, moments, okay, I had a chance to go to college early and not do it the tough way, just like you did. I did it when my I had my son. And so I had that, and I debated, and I talked to Patricia, and I talked. So I said, why didn't you encourage me? It could have really changed the trajectory of my life. And you said, no, you better go make some money. You need to get a job. And you didn't go to. So I went through these things that made a difference in my life. And I talked to her about that. And it it was a very hello self moment to me. But the audience said the same thing. They said, oh, my God, everybody needs to do this. But it was a letter to self. Yeah. I think one of the hardest things in life is to forgive ourselves for the steps that we have taken. And as a mom, I can say, oh, please, I don't know if I would have done things differently. I, I really don't know if I would have. We need to learn how to forgive ourselves because we were only doing what we knew best at the time with the and tools on the tool belt that we had. Yes. And yeah, it's a way of protecting ourselves when we are the wall in front of us that says, no, Patricia, you can't do that. You're not ready for it. Who knows? Maybe your inner self knows more. Maybe you weren't ready for that. Maybe you had to wait a couple of years and now you are ready for that. But it was great to and it was great to have that discussion. And I said at the end. Could we agree now to be real friends and work as a team instead of two separate parts of ourselves tearing this way? And help us. I wanted to say, I wanted her to work with me and me work with her because I can see the physical reality. She could see, I, I can see the spiritual reality and she can see. So if we blend those and we can see, a possibility of what's ahead, even though in the material world, we can't see a possibility of what's ahead. So it was like, I always say, my brother said to me one time, he was in a meeting in Chicago and he said, since, and mom was passed. And he said, I was sitting in this meeting, but yet mom was there. And I said, yeah, mom was there and said, when you get, the, when you come back home, stop on your way home. And said, Rick, you know something, what I've learned in my life, and I don't know if anybody believes this, it doesn't matter, but what I've learned and the way I've formed my life is that <clears throat> I believe we live in two worlds right here. We're living in both worlds. And we can hear the nudges of God if we pay attention because that spiritual aspect or whatever you want to call it will help us to say, yeah, that's not an accident. That's real. Pay attention. So we can work in partnership. And he said, sis, I never thought about that. But yeah. So I see us work living in together in two worlds while we're here. If we pay attention, and the problem is sometimes we get lost. I, I always go back to Garth Brooks' song, I could have missed the pain, but I would have met, had to miss the dance. You know, he if he didn't choose this, he could have missed the pain. And they, they got a divorce. But he said, I would have had to miss the dance. And I don't, like you were saying about regret, I don't want to miss the dance. No. And it takes in, just like we've been talking, and I know we're going to have to wrap it up, but it takes in getting some disruptions, doesn't it, Gloria? Absolutely. That's where 
you learn and that's where yes. growth comes from. Yes. It really does. Okay. We ha- I love this. Oh my God. This is- and I'm sure my audience has a lot to talk about. So one thing, is there one, just one nugget that you would like to share with the audience that you, and then we'll talk about, are you, do you have a book coming up? I know you're going to open a nursery center or daycare. Kind no, of plant nursery. Yeah. Uh, what is it? A plant nursery. A, yeah. a plant nursery. Oh, plant. Oh, plant. <laughs> it changes things. <laughs> a plant <laughs> nursery. Is there any nugget of anything you would just like to say in my closing? Here's something for you that I think can make a difference. Yes. Don't ever let fear stop you. If you have a question about whatever in life and you don't have the answer, there is someone out there that does. They call it networking in the adult world, but you can go to your teacher, to your principal, to your best friend's parents, to a therapist, yes, somebody in your congregation. And you can ask those questions because if you can find someone that will give you guidance or direction, you're already one step ahead. Have you faith know, yeah. Yes. Um, having faith in yourself. Um, even if it's not a whole bunch of faith, even if it's just a little bit, be kind to yourself, be forgiving to yourself, uh, be patient. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Be patient with yourself. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is a fabulous lesson to leave with the people is we need to think about who we are and treat ourselves like we would Somebody that we really <laughs> exactly exactly. Yeah. And so don't be afraid. Okay, Gloria, I, I have enjoyed this so much. Thank you for taking the time and tell Tim I said hi. He <laughs> said <laughs> hello. Yeah, we're like thank you so much, Patricia. Best in your future ahead, and we will talk more later. But for you out there in my audience, I hope that you've got one nugget at least from what Glory has shared about her own journey and her own life and the suggestions along the way that she has made to you about making your life maybe what you want it to be, or at least a piece of it. This is Patricia Leonard, your host of Hello Self Podcast. And I'm signing off like we always do. And that is, remember this, get your dreams and goals off that someday shelf and keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today. And may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.